five towns lie close to the heart of dear old England. They spread across the face of the countryside for many miles, proud, unique, and indispensable. Do you drink from a cup? Do you eat from a plate? You have the five towns to thank for that. The five towns stand for progress and civilization. When our story begins, Bursley was the largest of the five, and it was also the proudest. Admittedly, its atmosphere was inclined to be heavy, but some remarkable people breathed it. Among them was a widow, Mrs. Machin. She was a washerwoman. And there was Edward Henry Machin, her son. Denry, as his mother called him, was a healthy child, but it soon became apparent no ordinary one. As a boy, he was of a peculiarly thoughtful turn of mind. Instead of spending his leisure hours playing in the streets with his friends, he devoted extra time to the classroom. was not really dishonest. It was just that he liked to give Providence a helping hand. In any case, he soon had to pay the penalty for his crime. He won a scholarship to a school for the sons of gentlemen. And you know what the sons of gentlemen are? Washerwoman! 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 It was early born upon Denry that the road to success is fraught with hardship. When the time came for him to leave school and make his way in the world of men, Denry received early confirmation of the fact that even in that world, honesty is undoubtedly the best and most useful policy. <coughs> See Mr. Duncalf, please, sir. Business? I want to apply for the job advertised in the Sentinel. You won't do. Sir? You can't read. It says apply by letter, enclosing references. I know, sir, but you see, I've brought my references with me. This does belong to Mr. Duncalf, doesn't it? Mr. Duncalf. Mr. Duncalf. Mr. Duncalf. So Edward Henry became a solicitor's clerk. For a long time, he really felt that he had nothing more to hope for. Then he met the Countess. Yes? Good morning. Good morning, madam. Is Mr. Duncalf in? No, madam. He's over at Town Hall. Oh. 
How tiresome. I particularly wanted to see him. If you care to wait. No, thank you. Just tell him that Lady Chell called. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Yes, perhaps you can. Now, it's about the invitations for the municipal ball. Oh, yes. This is my list. He isn't to take any notice of the crossings out. You understand? Yes. His official list of all the aldermen and councillors should be added to this. Added to this. And I want all the invitations out by Wednesday at the latest. Wednesday at the latest. Thank you. Good day. Allow me. Thank you. I'll tell Mr. Duncalf the moment he gets back. Splendid. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Hello, Denry. How's your mother? Fine, thanks. Hello. What have you been up to? The Countess of Chell just gone. Had a message for Duncalf. Didn't give you an invitation to the ball, did she? No, she didn't. Ah, oh, too bad. She's no snob, though. No side to her. Who said there was? To hear people talk. I reckon she's the finest woman that ever came to this town. And that's a fact. <laughs> Machin being funny again, Mr. Emery? When I want my office turned into a musical, I'll let you know. Sir. Well, what is it? The Countess of Chelsea, she called. Well? She left a message about the invitations to the ball. She said, would you add the official list to this list of hers? She said not to take any notice of the crossings out. Terrible and the invitations have to go out by Wednesday, latest. That's tomorrow. Here. Here's the official list. You better get on with it. Make a full list out from the two and get all the envelopes addressed. You can stay in tonight and do the job. But, sir, there's the church social. Mr. Emery, bring in that draft agreement from Etches and Sons, will you, please? Yes, Mr. Duncalf, sir. And I didn't sleep well. Strikes me you're sleeping too well. I've got something on my mind. You'd better have a dose of castor oil. Morning, Mrs. Machen. Morning, Denry. Letter for you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. E.H. Machen, Esquire. What's happened? I've had an invitation to a dance. Mm -hmm. Who from? 
Countess of Chell. Mm, bless us. Now dance, eh? Do you know how? How? How to dance. I'll pick it up. Up and you'll have to make your excuses. Evening dress essential. Evening dress? Well, I never. Very nice cup. Yes, the only difficulty is the cup. I'm oh, please with the cup. Details. I think we've fixed that up for you. It'll be comfortable across the Just back. Just lift it up. It pulls a bit. I understand. Thank right. you very much, Mr. Barlow. I'll have the final fitting ready for you on Tuesday. All right. <clears throat> oh, by the way, sir, handkerchiefs are not being worn in the waistcoat this year. What, not even white ones? Not even white. It's the new London fashion. Hmm, very glad you told me, Shillitoe. Uh, uh, well, good day. Good day, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, Denry, what can I do for you? I want a dress suit. Oh, do you now? Yes. Sorry, it can't be done. It's the ball, you see. All the bigwigs in the town want a dress suit. I don't know how I'm going to get through all the orders as it is. But I'm going, you see. Going where? To the ball. Duncalf's clerk going to the ball? Yes, are you? Oh, I have no time for that sort of thing. Do you mean to say that the Countess sent an invitation to you? That's right. I could get one for you if you like. Oh? The Countess is a client of ours, and I'm in charge of the invitations. See? Oh. Are you sure? Of course, I'd need a bit of credit. A year? Two. This is one of the nicest pieces of face cloth I've had in for a long time. I can give you a fitting Wednesday. a chimpanzee and more, although I realize it's very difficult for you, more like a young lady. Now, we'll try again. And a one, a two, a three, a one, a two, a three. Come now, Mr. Clayton. I know your partner feels like a sack of potatoes, but there's no reason for holding her like one. And for goodness sake, will you open your eyes and look where you're going? All right, we'll do it once more. And a one, a two, a three, a one, a two, a three, a one, a two, a three. Get off her feet, you clumsy oaf. You've both about as much idea of dancing as a pair of crocodiles. This is your fifteenth lesson, and it might as well be your first. I shall double my fees to you both. And... Oh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Yes? I saw your notice, and I thought I'd just call in to see if I could... You want to learn to dance? Yes. I was on my way home, and as I was passing, I thought I'd just inquire. And you found yourself in a lunatic asylum. Well... Do you know what I was doing, Mr... Machen. I was consoling myself. You see, there are some who are natural dancers, and there are some who are not. And to those who are not, one cannot always say the things one wishes. And not when they're here, that is. I understand. I thought you would. You now, I should say, would be a natural dancer. You have the figure, the poise. Yes, it could be a pleasure for a young lady to dance with you. Oh, good. You'd like to start now. My fee is two guineas for a course of 18 lessons. Two guineas? Or I one thought... guinea for nine. But, Miss Earp, wouldn't you like an invitation to the Countess's ball? I can get you one, you know. I'm in charge of the invitations. Are you really, Mr. Machen? That would be extremely kind of you. I was so wishing I could go. And you, of course, will be going yourself. I really think you should have the two-guinea course. You can pay me next time you come. Right, we'll start with the waltz. It's quite simple. Ready? A right, left, right. A left, right, left. A right, left, right. Weight slightly forward. One, two, three. A one, two, three. Splendid, two, three. One, two, three. Together, two, three. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. Yes, you are a natural dancer. <laughs> Denery. What 
didn't you say? You'll be late again, and that's not good manners when the Countess has invited you. I know. I've promised the first dance to Ruth Earp. Ruth Earp, eh? Well, maybe you have. But the dinner table's no place for your boots. I'm sorry. Bless us. Well, I must be off. Your father never had one of those. No. Pride goes before a fall. That's right. Ah, get away with you. Have you got your key? <laughs> Good evening, Machin. Hello, Swetnam. Here she comes. She's very late, isn't she? Yes, yes. Would you care to step this way? Good evening, Mrs. Hall. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 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 Countess's cloak. Hello, John. Hello, Denry. Fancy seeing you. How goes it? Oh, proper temper, her ladyship's in. Trouble with one of the horses. So long. Bye bye. Miss yes, Earp. What about our dance? Our dance has just finished. Has it? I'm terribly sorry. Miss Cottrell, Mr. Machen. How'd you do? Didn't you look at your programme? Programme? It's the usual thing to do. Where do I get a programme? Well, I should ask the footman. One of those? That's right. Nelly? <laughs> Excuse me, can I have the pleasure of a dance with you? I'm so sorry, my program's full. Sorry. Excuse me, can I have the pleasure of a dance with you? Thank you, I'm afraid my program's full. Excuse me, can I have the... Our dance, I think, Miriam. So it is. old Mrs. Wixie. Did you ever see anything like it? She looks as if she's come out of a rag bag. I don't know what this town's coming to. Hello, Machin. Countess hasn't danced yet. She won't either. Can't say I blame her with this lot. Yeah, that's right. Nice woman. Mother was having tea with her the other day. Why don't some of those old buffers standing around ask her? Well, I suppose they can't dance. Well, somebody ought to ask her. Well, you go and do it. It's a free country. I would for two pins. I'll bet you five pounds you don't. I'll take you. this dance with you. It's nearly over, isn't it? I'm sure that doesn't matter. Thank you. I should like to. Mitch! <laughs> trouble with one of your horses tonight. Yes, we did. Who told you? Oh, I just picked it up. I have an idea I've seen you somewhere before, Mr. Machin, I'm Mr. Duncalf's clerk. You were at the office. Oh, yes, of course, I remember. You dance very well, Mr. Machin. I oh, really?
As a matter of fact, it's the first time I've ever danced in my life. Except at Miss Earps, you know. Indeed. As she says it's the same in dancing as it is in life. It's the woman's duty to adapt herself to the man. Does she? That's the most interesting thought. Anyway, I soon picked it up. And dancing, I mean. You pick things up easily, don't you? Yes. Do you? <laughs> Thank you, Countess. Thank you, Mr. Machen. I enjoyed that. <laughs> There you are. I admire your cheek. What was she like to dance with? Oh, just the same as any other woman. What was she laughing at? Ladies and gentlemen, take your partners for the lancers. Excuse me. <laughs> Fine sunny day. Mechin! That's why. He was here when I got in, and I wasn't more than five minutes late. Mechin! invited you to the Countess's ball. Who, sir? Yes, who? Answer me. I did. You did? Yes, I thought perhaps you'd forgotten to put my name on the list of invitations. Oh, you did, did you? I suppose you thought I'd forgotten to put down that tailor chap, too. Shillito and Miss Earp. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. Nothing. I suppose you fancy yourself dancing with your betters, eh? Yes, don't you? How dare you speak to me like that? I never have employed you in the first place. A washerwoman's son. You haven't done an honest day's work since you've been here, nor ever likely to. Well, you can take a week's notice, do you understand? A week's notice. And clear up those documents and take them down to the vault. The lot. It's no use. I intend to wait. Ah, Mr. Duncalf, at last I find you in. I'm extremely sorry, Mrs. Cardin, but I'm very busy just at the moment. If you'll make an appointment with my car, I I'll... do not care to make an appointment. What I'm asking you to do when I've taken the trouble to drive into town to see you is to listen to what I have to say and perhaps remove your hat to do so. My dear Mrs. Cardin, I am Cardin, aware you... that I am not your most important client, but the property you manage for me and the rent you collect on my behalf are not insignificant and surely entitle me my to My dear the... madam, will entitle you... Entitle me to the elementary courtesies, I was about to say when you interrupted me. But I see that I'm mistaken. Madam, if you care to place your interests in other hands, I shall be only too delighted to hand over all your papers on payment of my costs. And good morning to you. Oh! Oh! you, Mr. Machin. If Duncalf sent you to apologise, you can save your breath. Well, it's not that, Mrs. Collin. There's something I want to explain. Explain? I'm not used to being insulted, Mr. Machin. Oh, I should think not, indeed. It's too cruel. Just because I'm a widow with nobody to protect me, I've spoken to like that. Well, let me tell you this. I take Mr. Duncalf at his word, if there was anybody else I could trust, but... I've heard such tales about rent collectors. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, Mrs. Collin. I'll collect your rents for you, if you like. You? You see, I've given him my notice. 
The fact is, uh, Dunkarf and I don't hit it off together. But you're only And adult. what's more, I'll do it for 5% instead of 7 and a half, and I'll settle accounts every month or week, if you like, instead of once a quarter like he does. Well, I don't know that... I... 5%, did you say? Three shillings rent, sixpence off the arrears. There you are, though. Ten, eleven. Three bottles, that's it. Hello. Hello. Well, you'll just have to go without your pint, won't you? If it's rent you want, I've not for you. Come now, Mrs. Hollins, that won't do. Here, take a pinch of tobacco. I'm not going without half a crown at any rate. Well, you'll be here for a better part of some time then. <laughs> I've told you about my son Jack. He's been out of work six weeks. He starts today. He'll let you have some at Saturday. It won't do, Mother. We can't have any more arrears, you know. The way you people go on. You're ruining poor Mrs. Codlin. Six and forty years have I lived in this here house. And look what you owe. It's the bailiffs for you, I'm afraid. Nay, nay, you'll not turn me out. I'm sorry, Mother. It's the rent of the bailiffs, one or the other. Look, I'd hate to see you turned out of your home. I'll lend you half a crown, if you like. But I can't do it for nothing. You must pay me back next week and give me threepence. You're a queer one, Mr. Meachin. Well, it's fair, isn't it? Now get your rent book. Threepence a week for half a crown, that's 10%. That's 40% per month and 500% over the year, you see, Mother? I've still got that five pounds of one at the ball. And five pounds at 10% per week, compound interest. Why, that's a fortune. There's lots of them hard up for the rent. It'll be doing them a kindness. Supposing they won't pay you back? Ah, they'll have to. You see, when they pay me the next rent, I won't mark it down in their books unless they're straight with me. Aren't you impressed? That's me. My name's Calvert. Oh, yes. I've been hearing a lot about you. Gets the rents in and no nonsense. That's what old Mrs. Codlin tells me. Clears up the arrears. 5% settled monthly, right? That's right. Hmm. Here's a list of my tenants in arrears. Get that lot cleared up. I might have something more for you. Right? Right. Good. I'll give you a week. <coughs> What's the matter with him? It's your stick. Yes, Friday. Don't forget to practice your turns. I won't. Good afternoon, Mr. Machen. Good afternoon, Nellie. Miss Cottrell. I like your hat. Thank you.
How do you do, Miss Earp? How do you do, Mr. Machen? Can I come in a moment? Uh, please do. It's a long time since we've seen anything of one another, Mr. Machen. Yes, it is. Do sit down. Thank you. I've called about the rent, Miss Earp. The rent? Yes, I collect rents, you know. Oh, indeed. I thought you were a gentleman. Mr. Herbert Calvert has instructed me that no rent is to be allowed to remain in arrears. Now, let's see. You owe 30 pounds plus... Mr. Herbert Calvert. So that's what he's done. I presume you know what happened. Happened? Mr. Calvert took advantage of his visit here for his rent to behave in a very vulgar and offensive way. Oh. What did he do? He insulted me. Oh. I would have given him notice to leave instantly if I hadn't had to consider my pupils. As it was, I decided to withhold the rent, and I shall continue to do so until I receive an apology. It wouldn't be convenient, then, to pay something on account. Convenient? Everybody in this town knows that my clientele gets larger every year. Convenient? It's perfectly convenient. I just don't care to. Is that final, Miss Earp? Absolutely. Then I think the simplest thing for me will be to send round the bailiff tomorrow morning, early. I see. So I'm to be persecuted as well. Oh, no, the bailiff's quite a nice chap. What a curious man you are, Mr. Machen. Very well. I suppose I shall have to give in. I'll write to you tonight. With the money? You could give it me now, really, couldn't you? Yes, I could. And to make you thoroughly ashamed of yourself, I shall give you some tea as well. Oh, there's no need. Oh, but there is. I insist. More tea. Oh, thank you. Here, let me take your cup, then. Oh, thank you. Cigarette? Thank you. The matches are inside. You're sure you don't mind? Oh, no, I like it. And do you smoke? I like a man to smoke. I hear you're a member of the country club now. Oh, yes. It means you're becoming a very important person. The bank manager put me up. Ah, but you know, people are still talking about the way you danced with the Countess. <laughs> Well, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have been able to dance with her. Oh, but I'm sure you're the sort of man who could do anything if he wants to. Ashtray? I'm keeping you. No, no. I have a pupil coming in five minutes, that's all. Anyway, you can't go before I've paid you. Oh, well... Oh, no, I insist. Every month I've put your horrid Mr. Calvert's rent in this box. It's all there. See? I see. Now you shall open it. Turn it sharply to the right. Doesn't seem to open. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a little awkward. Let me. Now. It's broken, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. It's just that. I don't see how we're going to get it open. Do you mind calling in at Almond's? They'll have to send somebody round to force it first thing in the morning. And then I can call in and give you the money. Oh, no, that's all right. I can call. Can you? Oh, yes. To tea. The pupil? Tomorrow, then.
Is there anybody there? Yes. Who is it? It's me. Miss Earp? Yes, is that Mr. Machen? Yes. What on earth are you doing in there? What did you say? I said, what on earth? Never mind. I'll try and get round to you. Where are you? I'm here, on a table. Just a moment, I've got some matches. I think I may have fractured it. Can't you get me out? I think we're too far from the bank. How deep's the water down there? Not very. Then I'll come down. The men just put the table in and said it was time for supper and took the horses out and went. Furniture men are always like that. But how did you get here? I was looking for a box to pack the china in. Oh, I see. Doing a moonlight flit, eh? You've got a nerve. I don't know what you mean. I was helping a friend. A friend? That's your table you're sitting on there. The same one that had the little box with the lock that doesn't work. I'd have looked a prize chump going up to an empty house for tea tomorrow, wouldn't I? And all that talk about Calvert insulting you. Well, it's bailiffs for you this time, Miss Earp, and make no mistake about it. Bailiffs! <laughs> I say, it's, it's not as bad as that. It isn't, really. I did try to pay, but it was no good. There was so much owing and so few people who wanted to dance. I wasn't extravagant. But you've got to have good clothes and things if you want the nice people to come. And it wouldn't have been any good my selling it all up because then I'd have nothing. But where were you going? I was going to my father in Birmingham. I didn't know you had a father. Why doesn't he help? He's bankrupt again. Again? He's been bankrupt four times. Oh. That's why I tried on my own. Oh, what's going to become of me? You'll be all right. You better get out of here. That table's made of iron, isn't it? Yes, why? The table's the only thing that will give you away. We'll drop it out there. The water's deep enough. Now, come on. Oh, Derry. Is it safe? You'll be safe with me. Oh, dear. Hicks. Cracknell. Little Miss Martin. And, uh... There's ten pounds from Miss Earp on account. Uh, less commission, of course. Well, well. What about the balance? You'll get it. Lots of rumours about that van business the other night. She trying to hook it on the QT? No, no. I think the van went to the wrong house. Funny how people talk. Some say that you're engaged to her. Oh, look. There's silly old Dunkarf coming out of the shoe shop. And that you're off to Landidno for a holiday. They may be right at that. And taking Nellie Cottrell along as a chaperone. I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I like you, Denry. You're getting to be quite a card. Paying tenants' rents for them and everything. I'll tell you what I'll do. You can look after the rest of my property if you like. Good, I will. When do I start? Next week? You'll be away. I'll come back for a couple of days to collect the rents. All right. Here's the list. Thanks. Good day. Good day to you. Machen, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Nelly's bed's a little hard. 
hard, but mine's very comfortable. It's a different landlady from the one I had last year, but she's very nice. Now, where should we begin? There's so much to do, and we've got to do everything. I know the pier. You're frightfully close. I can see the captain clearly. So very becoming to a man a beard. Denry, why don't you grow a beard? Oh, Denry, our future. Shall I go first? You do want to know your fate, don't you, Denry? Come, Nelly. Come on in, Rose. It's lovely. Oh, I don't think I can face it after all. I'll try again tomorrow. Very cheap, this Snowden. Of course, I went last year, but I'd love to go again. The Isle of Man's magnificent, but we must go first class. Look, Danny, marionettes. It's horrid, but we'll have to go. Danny, six shillings. Now, this is something we mustn't miss. Oh, but Denry won't be here on Tuesday. What do you mean? I've got to go to Bursley to collect the rents. Oh, that. But you'll be back in time for the concert. You said you were catching the 7 o'clock train. We'll meet you at the station. John Dedno Station! John Dedno! All change out, please. 20 minutes late. You know, it's too bad. The pier's quite close and it doesn't start too late. Oh, here he is. Hello, hello, Nelly. Good evening, Denry. Oh, late. We'll have to go straight there. I caught the first train I could. I didn't even get a chance to get to the bank. I say there's a bit of a wind, isn't there? Mm, the maid at our hotel says it's the worst storm they've had for 20 years. We couldn't even get on the promenade this afternoon. So we went shopping instead. We'll have to call a cab. Cab? Cab! What's that? What's all that about? There's a Norwegian ship in trouble, and the fishing boat has gone out from the pier to dig off the crew. Oh, let's go and see. You can't. The pier has been closed. Has it? You can't go on there. I tell you, you can't go on. The pier is closed. We are bringing a boat in here. I tell you, you can't go in there. These ladies are with me, Press, Staffordshire Sentinel. I'll bolt the gate. Thank you. the fishing boat they were talking about. You two wait in the shelter. I'm going down. Here, take this. It's the rents. the outside and I'll go around the inside. 
Now here we are, lovely sustaining chocolate. There we are, and for you. Oh, you don't look very well. You must have some. Coco, you like hot cocoa? And what about you? Oh, what a difficult language. Still, never mind. There you are, and you. That's all, I'm afraid. But hold on, I'll be back. you be? We're running out of chocolate, but there's butterscotch and toffee. Have you any more pennies? No, couldn't you use half crowns instead? No, we tried. They won't fit the machine. Nelly! Good morning, Denry. Good morning. Where's Nelly? I told her to meet us later in the pavilion. And how are you feeling? Fine. No cold or anything? No. Then Nellie and I got our bill for the rooms this morning. Did you? Yes. Did you pay it? Yes. The landlady said she didn't give credit, so Nellie gave me her share and, and I paid it. Good. Actually, I've hardly any of the money left that you gave me. There was this dress, of course, but you've no idea how money goes. No? And one cannot run into debt here. They'd only claim your luggage. Yes, I expect they would. I suppose we... We couldn't use some of that. Is there any left? Mr. Calvert will be pleased. He's so generous, you know, but of course you know. What exactly do you mean by that? Nothing. One cannot make a remark like that and mean nothing. A chap can make any remark and mean nothing. Good morning. Who's that? It's a gentleman I was once engaged to. Oh. Well? I suppose I shall just have to go home earlier, that's all. Pity. I think I shall go and find Nelly. <laughs> oh, it's you. Patching it up? It's hardly worth it. Oh, it's not as bad as all that, is it? No. Look at her. Hmm. I see what you mean. Want to sell her? I might. Want to buy her? I might. Come and have a drink. But you said just now on the beach she wasn't worth patching up. Ah, that was before I knew you wanted to buy her. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 15 pounds now, 15 pounds when I collect her, and 15 pounds at the end of the season. And what's more, I'll give you five pounds a week to look after things. Now what do you say? All right, I'll do it. Have another drink. Me? Now have I caught everything. Oh, I nearly forgot we must have something to read in the train. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, madam. I have this and this and this and this. Oh, yes, and that over there. How much? Three and six, madam. Three and six, then, eh? She's getting some chocolates. Mm. Oh, perhaps you would prefer this one, madam. It's got a beautiful ribbon. Isn't this a lovely box? Mm. How much? Uh, Fifteen shillings, madam. Oh, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> 
Well, who are they? A young lady I was once engaged to. Which one? I can't remember. Fifteen shillings? Oh, I've been wanting to buy one of these paperweights before. Pure crystal. Have you got one with a picture of the Great Orm? I'm afraid not, madam. We've got the Esplanade and Happy Valley, but we're out of the Great Orm. Oh, dear. Well, can't you get one and send it to me? Yes, madam, we could do that. They're 35 shillings each. I'll just make a note of where to send it. What name? Rockefeller. <laughs> Buckingham Palace. Henry, what an awful thing to say. I only said Rockefeller. Can't a chap say Rockefeller? No, he can't. Ruth! You must apologize at once. Ruth! Ruth! The ticket's near left. Denry didn't mean it, Ruth. He's very sorry. I will not submit to insult. No, no, of course not. Denry, your ring. Our engagement is at an end. Oh, Ruth! Ruth! I only said Rockefeller. Come along, ladies and gentlemen. Come along. Everybody's taking the chance of a trip to the scene of the terrible Rang Didno shipwreck. Every man, woman, and little child will want this unique and educational experience. Only two and sixpence for the round trip, including the use of one of the original life belts, if so desired. The gallant Norwegian sailormen were royal to the scene of that terrible ordeal. Sailings every half hour of the day. Children are frightened. Babies and arms free. Well, there the you are, Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. That's another three pounds. Thanks, Simeon. That's 60 pounds in three days. Seem to like it, don't they? Just out of Craigian's old boat. That's it. It's a mighty lot of money. We'll do nothing, Mr. Mason. Ah, but you see, I did do something, Simeon. I thought of it. Denary. Hello, Mother. So you're back for good now, are you? Yes. And I've brought you a little present. What's in it? A lot of jolly fine pebbles I've been collecting on the beach. Pebbles, eh? Oh, go on, open it up. More somewhere. Never mind, we'll look for those tomorrow. One thousand and fourteen pounds. And I sold the boat for what I paid for it. And is all this really yours? No, I've told you it's yours. But what are we going to do with it? Well, for one thing, you don't have to work anymore at that old wash tub. And why not? Now listen. Mama. I've always worked for my living, and I'll go on working, thank you very much. What's wrong with working? Nothing. It's your money. And you can spend it or save it as you please. Though if you ask me, I'd save it. Because you never know what can happen. Why, only last week I dropped half a crown down the grating outside. <laughs> you can laugh. It never does no harm to save. No, it doesn't. But I've got a better idea. Do you see what I mean, Mr. Crane? People join the club and pay in so much a week. Well? The say a chap's decided on a ten-pound subscription. Well, after he's paid in only five pounds to me, he gets ten pounds worth of goods from you on his card. I pay you. In fact, you lend him five pounds. That's right, and he pays me back week by week. That takes capital. Doesn't he pay you interest? No, he pays me ten pounds and gets ten pounds worth of goods from you or somebody else. <laughs> and you do this just to help the working man, eh? Oh, no. You give me a 15% discount. 
Here, wait a minute. Because he can only use his club card at the shops which I nominate. And the shops which I nominate are the ones that give me 15% discount, see? I see. You're quite a card yourself, aren't you, Mr. Machin? All right. I'm on. But it's extra business for you, Mr. Bostock. The club makes it easier for them to buy. You'll get customers you've never even seen before. Isn't that worth 15%? How do I know I'll get my money from you? I'll open an account with you today. Give you a deposit. Right? All right, Machin, I'll give it a trial. But I want £50 deposit, see? £70 deposit, Henry, or rule me out. A deposit, Machin, and I'm in. Deposit. 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 I'd like to help you, Denry, but I'm afraid I can't. But the whole thing's a colossal success. I know. If it weren't, you wouldn't be needing money. Ah, it's an old disease, Denry. You're undercapitalized. Well, I know that. That's why I came to the bank. I'll be frank, Denry. These people of mine at head office, all they see is a young chap without anything really solid behind him asking for a loan which they'd think twice about giving to an old established business house. They don't like that. You see, you're not respectable. I'm not respectable, eh? No. From a banking point of view, you're not. Now, if you had someone with a name, with a position to keep up, a reputation for probity to consider, who'd lend that name to the club's activities as a patron, say, well, that'd be different. See? I see. Thanks. Someone respectable, eh? So you see, John, there's nothing in it. Well, I'd like to oblige, Henry, but... Look, I'll tell you what. You know those new kitchen ranges with brass knobs and everything? Yes. You do this for me, I'll get Mr. Calvert to install one of those ranges in your mother's kitchen. Well, I don't... Brass know... knobs? Now what you say? Well, it's a bit All risky, you've got to do is to give me the thumbs-up sign as you pass. So that's settled, isn't it? Henry, I... It's an airside taste, my lady. It's broken. I will get out. A trace, you say? Yes, my lady. I'll have it right in a brace of shakes, my lady. Well, how long is a brace of shakes? Uh, about 20 minutes, my lady. It's too long? Yes, my lady. Good afternoon, Countess. Had an accident? No, I'm doing this for idle amusement. Can I be of any assistance to you? Do you know, Mr. Machin, I rather think you can. So you see, Countess, the Five Towns Universal Thrift Club is something people really need round here. It makes it easier for them to buy the things they want. I see. You're very charitable, Mr. Machin. Oh, no, I just want to make money. So I imagined. 
I don't see anything wrong with that, Countess, do you? No, but I don't see myself as patron either, I'm afraid, Mr. Major. Oh, well. Here we are, just about to turn into the square in a couple of minutes in hand. Not bad for a mule, eh? Don't you? I hope you're not going to let this animal beat us, Mr. Machin. I think I've hurt my arm a bit. Oh, then I'd better drive. Once you let it beat you, it'll never forget it. Kindly back us out of here, please. Will you? Right, Make way there, please. Thank you. Send a bill for any damage to me. His arm. The doctor must be found right away. Very good, my lady. Are you all right, Mr. Machin? The moment the ceremony is over, I shall drive you home. You had better stay with me. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I've had my say about this sale of work. And in concluding with my proposal for a vote of thanks to the Countess of Chell for coming here in person to open it, I should like to say in my official capacity as superintendent of police, that I don't know that I ought not to charge the Countess and Mr. Machin here with driving to the common danger. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, all's well that ends well, as they say. <laughs> I now propose a vote of thanks and call upon it to be seconded. <laughs> Got to be seconded. You going to second it? Me? No. No, you do it, don't carve. No, Calvert, you better. Well, I have nothing prepared. Somebody's got to do it. Shall I do it? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've had the honor of being asked by the ladies' committee to second the vote of thanks to the Countess of Chell. I see there are quite a few of you here this afternoon who are members of the Five Towns Universal Thrift Club. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you can't use your cards this afternoon. It's your cash they want. Cash on the nail. And why? Because it's for charity. And a good charity at that. The Bursley Cottage Hospital. In fact, I think the best way we can thank the Countess for coming here this afternoon is to give it all the support we can. <laughs> And just to show you that I mean what I say, I'm going to start the ball rolling by buying something. Now, what's cheapest? <laughs> well, whatever it is, I'll give 50 pounds for it. And I'll hand my cheque to your committee this afternoon. <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, move along, please. And let's show the five towns that Bursley's heart's in the right place. <laughs> Bye. 
Hvad så? Åbn dig med. Shall I make the tea, Mrs. Machen? Thank you, Nelly. Is Denery taking you to the concert next week? Oh, well, he did say something about it, but since he became a counselor, he's been so busy. Counselor. Reckon he's getting above himself. His father never wanted to be a counselor. What do you think? I heard from Ruth Earp yesterday. Oh? She's married. That's a blessing. Three months ago to a Birmingham man. Very rich. He's a bit old, of course, but she's very happy. Happen she is, if he's rich. Good night, Tommy. Good night, sir. Hello, Nelly. Hello, Denry. Aren't you in bed? Does it look like it? Now you know what the doctor said. Ah, uh, doctor. What have you got there? Present for you. It's your birthday tomorrow. Your birthday? And you never told me. I don't know as I want reminding of it. There. Oh, it's lovely. Bless us. Oh, put it on. Go on, Nelly, make her put it on. Oh. My, it's warm. Well, it should be. It's real sealskin. Well, don't take it off. What are you doing? Putting it away, of course. I'll get some moth powder tomorrow. Now, listen, Mother, you know what the doctor said. You've got to keep warm. You're not well. I never said I was. And you never will be in this rotten old place. It's damp. This was reckoned a very good class of house when your father and I came into it. But some folks have gotten so grand. Now, listen, Mother. Do you know how much I'm making? Over 2,000 a year. We don't have to go on living here, do we? You can live where you like. But I'm staying here. And that's final. <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You, Denry. Your mother must be the only person in the five towns who always gets the better of you. Is that your considered opinion? It is. Bless us. <laughs> Denry! Well, what do you think of her? Not bad, is she? Is it yours? Yes, I got her three weeks ago. Three weeks ago? But you only said you might get one. I wanted to surprise you and I had to learn to drive first. Wonderful. I'll take you for a spin after tea, if you like. Is your father in? No, he had to go to Manchester. On business. Money? I think so. Don't you worry, anyway. Who do the GGs belong to? Ah, that's my surprise. Come on in. I'll show you. Look. By Jove. Good afternoon, Denry. I say, what a surprise. How are you? Now, don't tell me. I can see how you are. You look wonderful. Now, that's not the right thing to say to a widow in mourning, Denry. A widow? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Nellie's been telling me about your success. I expect she's made too much of it. I expect she has. He's always so modest. He always was. Nellie! Yes, Mother? Tea's ready. I did very little shopping in Paris. I didn't want to stay. But I simply couldn't face going back to that horrid Swiss hotel crammed full of tourists. Thank you. So I went to Monte Carlo instead. It was very gay, of course. Yes, it must have been. But not as gay as Venice. That was gayer? Oh, naturally much. I stayed with the Contessa Martinari and her brother. They have a nice palace. It used to be the Duke of Rodrigo. Of course, they only keep about... 26 of their rooms open, but it's really very comfortable and so much easier to run. And after all, we spent most of the time on the yacht. 
Denry, do pass the cakes to Lady Capron Smith. Yes, of course. To who? Me. No, thank you. It must seem very tame for you back here in England. Oh, no, I like England. After all, it's where one's real friends are. And one does so long for news. I'm afraid nothing much has happened here. Alderman Mole died. I'm afraid I don't... He was going to be mayor in November. Oh. Now, I suppose we shall have to have Mr. Duncalf. Oh, he's a horrible man. And now he wants to close down the football club just because it won't pay. Silly old Duncalf. Nellie, I think that's your father back. Will you excuse me? Yes, of course. Oh, Ruth, I nearly forgot. Denry's got a motor. Really? Drive well? well? It's easy once you've got the knack of it. You've changed, you know. Have I? You're so much more self-assured, mature. You've changed a bit yourself. What children we were. Do you remember Mr. Calvert's rent? Yes, do you? <laughs> well, this is more comfortable than a furniture van. Of course, if I got one, I'd have to have a chauffeur. You know, I didn't know your husband had a title. What was he, a lord? No, only a knight. Oh. I didn't even know he'd kicked the bucket. Died. How did it happen? We'd only been married a little while. A few months. It was very sudden. Hard. He overtaxed his strength. Of course, he was quite elderly, but most good and kind. He was in steel. Oh. Do you see very much of Nelly? Quite a bit. I'm very fond of Nelly. <laughs> yes, she's sweet. I'm so glad we met again, Denry. That silly little misunderstanding. You know, it's haunted me. <laughs> Has it? Money. It's so important when you haven't got it. And now we've both got plenty and it doesn't matter. The real thing is ambition, isn't it? How do you mean? You want to be mayor, don't you? You see, I could have been the youngest mayor this town's ever had. Could have been? Well, next year it'll be too late for that. And this year there's silly old Duncalf. You don't want to upset him. <laughs> I don't mind about that, but... But what? I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Denry, don't you remember what I used to say to you? What was that? You can do anything, anything at all, if you want to enough. You're that kind of man. You really think so? Yes. Mr. Mayor, enjoyed yourself? Well, I must admit. And this is the kind of show that I'm blamed for trying to put a stop to. Well, the weather doesn't help. Don't make no difference what the weather is. Bursley team's a joke. As long as we get no public support, it'll stay a joke. Now the impertinence to organise meetings to condemn the directors. Well, the joke's over now. We're closing it down. It's a pity about Thursday's meeting, though. We don't want the thing to become a political issue. Politics don't come into it. It's simply a matter of the shareholders' interest being protected. And I'm going to say so. I'll give them a meeting. Hey. I'd like a word with your captain, Councillor Mitchell. you better come with me. Thanks. Co-directors have been losing money, our own money, 
to provide this town with a professional football team. And we warned you again and again what would happen if these matches weren't better patronized. And now, when you starve the club to death, you call a meeting to complain about bad management. <laughs> I thought you were in Birmingham. Did you? New blood and all the rest of it. It's all very well to talk, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Facts are the real talkers. How are you going to get new blood with transfer fees as high as they are? Would anybody at this meeting care to lend the club a thousand pounds or so? Anybody? <laughs> oh, I thought not. What you're asking for is not better management but something for nothing. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I say a few words on this subject? Step up on the platform, Councillor Machin. Thanks. I don't pretend to be an expert on football, but I would like to say something about this question of new blood. If I'm not mistaken, one of the greatest modern footballers is a native of this town. Kalea. That's right, Kalea. Kalea is the man I mean. The greatest centre forward in England. Kalea left this town when he was a boy and he's made the fortunes of every club he's played for. Liverpool City. York County. York County. Leicester North End. That's right, and Birmingham. He's the best there is. <laughs> Gentlemen, I say that Kalea ought to come back to his native town. Yeah. As Bursley's centre forward, he'd lead us on to victory, all right, wouldn't he? I'm glad Councillor Machen admits that he has no knowledge of football, because that saves me the trouble of telling you. Why don't you sit down? <laughs> it's probably news to him that Aston Villa and Blackburn Rovers have both made offers to Birmingham for Kalea, and now these two wealthy clubs are fighting it out between them. And as to getting Kalea back into Bursley, why, steam engines and the king himself couldn't do it. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kalea, would you mind stepping up a moment so we can all have a look at you? <laughs> Well, gentlemen, we've got Mr. Kalea here without either a steam engine or his majesty. <laughs> I suggest to the directors of the club that they accept him and try another season. Yeah. Wait a moment, wait a moment. What about the transfer? Oh, I forgot. I signed him up in Birmingham this morning as a present for the club. <laughs> Councillor Cottrell, terrible thing. Bankrupt. Cottrell's bankrupt? Yes, I know. The petition was filed in Manchester. That's how they were able to keep it a secret for so long. Nellie herself didn't know until last week. She told me yesterday. But why didn't they tell me? I'd have helped them. Well, it wasn't just the money. There was talk of, well, criminal proceedings. 
Well, why didn't you tell me? Just to let them go off like that. Oh, Nellie made me promise not to. They didn't want a lot of fuss. They were ashamed. Their relations in Canada sent them the money for the fair. It seemed easier for them to just go without saying goodbye. But to Canada? They sail from Liverpool tomorrow, steerage. Steerage? Nellie in the steerage? And Mr. and Mrs. Cottrell. They wanted a little money left for when they got there. Steerage? Now we'll soon change that. But they're sailing tomorrow afternoon. It's too late. Oh, no, it isn't. I can telegraph Liverpool for first-class cabins, go up my train in the morning and make them change. Steerage. Henry, all right. Listen, we're both friends of theirs. Let's halve the costs, you and I, and let's go together to Liverpool and see them off. That's a very good idea. <laughs> We don't know how to thank you. Oh, we couldn't let you go like that. Mr. and Mrs. Cottrell? Yes. Would you please come and check your luggage? Oh, ashore, that's going ashore. Someday, I hope to repay you. Oh, don't you worry about that. All ashore, that's going ashore. Goodbye, Denry. Goodbye, Mrs. Cottrell. All ashore, that's going ashore. Now, I really think we should go. Yes. Goodbye, Nelly, darling. Goodbye, Mrs. Sure for a minute. I've left something I meant to give you. It's in the cab. But there isn't time. The bell is... Oh, that's just a dodge to get people off quickly. Come on, this way. This way. No, oh, thank you, anyway, sir. Which one is just it? Just a minute, this one will do. In you get. Lime Street Station. Denry! Please follow that. Sorry, ma'am. You have to take the cab in front. Down, send the cabby. <laughs> Exchange, please. Allow me. Thank you. It's always sad saying goodbye to someone you're fond of, isn't it? Yes, it is. Your husband? My husband? No, just friends. Uh -huh. I have no husband. I've been seeing somebody off myself. Your wife? Oh, no, 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 only my sister. I'm not married. Oh. You're upset, aren't you? This is rather an unpleasant district, you know. May I escort you back to civilization? Well... I have my car. Oh, thank you. Look here, if you don't dry up, I'll have to cry myself. I'll send a telegram to your father and mother. They'll get it when they land. What are you going to do with me? Do with you? Marry you, of course. What do you think? Marry me? You feel happy. If I had any sense, I'd have thought of it long ago. Ruth. Oh, hang Ruth. She can take care of herself. Are you sure you're quite comfortable? Yes, thank you. You're really very kind. Not at all. Where to, my lord? Where can I take you? Well, I'm staying at the Coronation Hotel. What an extraordinary coincidence. I'm staying there too. To the hotel, please, Brian.
citizen. What great cause has he ever been identified with? I think I can tell you that, Mr. Duncalf. It's quite simple. He's identified with the great cause of cheering us all up. Look. 